most important people are already here, so I'd like to welcome you to my presentation. My name is Karin Messer, I'm the lecturer from Graz. Um, I really prepared a long presentation about how great the healthcare system is in Austria and how this works and it links together with the social insurance and everything. But I think I keep it a little bit short and simple. By now you know already we have a great healthcare system in Austria and nearly everything gets paid. So I think that's the most important thing. So let's move on to the more interesting stuff. I'd like to show you something about the graphs and follow the bright example of my colleagues. Uh, this is grass, you see there a little bit of a hill, that's the so-called Schlossberg, we don't ski there. But you see there are a little bit other mountains in the back there where you can go skiing. So, uh, we have, it's the second largest city in Austria, we have around 300,000 inhabitants. We have a very long tradition of uh, university education, we have the six universities. I'm working in one of these universities. Some more impressions about grass. So this is, we have a very old uh, town, old city. Uh, even in 1999, uh, Graz was added to the UNESCO um, World Cultural Inher Heritage Sites uh, because we have all these old buildings and a very old town who is very well preserved. So here you see the town hall and the center, there's the marketplace. And in the year 2003, Graz came the capital city of culture. So this happens that some new buildings, of course. It's not a UFO that's landed, that's our Kunsthaus. Yeah? Looks a little bit strange, but some nice, more modern architecture has been taking place. So this is the Kunsthaus where you have a lot of social interactivities, where you have some exhibitions and so on. And something else occurred, that's the so-called Murinsel. That's some um, artificial island in the river, uh, yeah, and there's a cafe. Uh, this picture has been made before the bridge, where you can see this, uh, this artificial island. And it's very funny because the young people, they are doing there some wakeboarding. So they, on the bridge there is a rope, and there's connected with the wakeboard, and then they do some wakeboarding. So if you fall in the water, uh, don't expect to end up here because the water flows in a different direction. Mm -hmm. so, but it's a cool thing to do in Graz. <laughs> and, and we have a nice life. So, um, Harry sent you this picture yesterday that you have an impression of what we are doing right now in Graz in the evening. So that's one of the places to be, to go out in the evening. Um, we didn't overdo it because in the winter it's quite cold, uh, so we don't dig these palms in the ground, we remove them somewhere else in the winter. And, yeah, uh, and also we have special food. Uh, you know what the, for the Irish people the Guinness that makes them strong and healthy. For the Netherlands they somehow they have these coffee shops. I don't know what coffee shops, I don't know what they're doing there. And <laughs> <laughs> in Graz. That's something similar. Um, a very secret stuff. It's called pumpkin seed oil. We spread it everywhere. It goes well with ice cream, it goes well over the salad, it goes over the scrambled eggs. So you can see when you come to Graz. And um, somebody told me Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know the famous um, guy who is now in California, Mr. Muscles, he's grown, grown up with this pumpkin seed oil. So this makes you strong and healthy and clever as well. I hope this prepared a little bit for the information about the university. Um, some quick checks. The University of uh, Applied Services, uh, Sciences is called FIU and Graz. It's founded in 1995. We have some degrees in Bachelor and in Master. We don't have a PhD by now, but you can make the PhD in one of the those universities uh, after finishing our Master degree. Um, we have around 3,700 students, and 7% out of these students are um, from foreign countries. We have some partner universities as well. And our um, university is split in six departments. So you see the first in alphabetical order. The first one is the Applied Computer Sciences, where he has is also a part 
apart from. Before we have been in this health studies, but they, they have a little bit wondering what, like, what are the computer guys are doing there, and so we get into the computer sciences. So what is okay as well? We do some international research and some development project on the international area. Yeah, this is how it looks like. So we have a big campus, and that's just in Graz. We have two other locations where you can study as well, but the main part is in Graz. That's how it really looks like. And here you can see some more of our students. You already met five of them. As you see, all the others are also very relaxed and enjoying themselves. Yeah, uh, what I'm doing, I'm doing the non-technical things in our e-health department, but of course related to the technical, to the technical part. So there's all this management and organizational health systems, project management, process management, and quality management. These are my uh, special tasks I'm doing there. And this leads me to the subject today. It's about healthcare quality. I mean, some said, oh yeah, maybe there's somebody that's interested in it. Uh, and it's so pity because that this lecture didn't happen on the very first day because uh, without uh, quality, you don't get your equipment on the market. I mean, if you develop something and if you connect some IT to some, some equipment that measures some vital data or something, and there's no way that you can go to the market without making a proof that the quality is all right. So quality is really something, even in IT, you have to think before you do something. So, but nevertheless, better now than too late. So let's do the lectures as the last lecture of this week. Um, yeah, I mean, what I like to tell you is a little bit, what is quality? Um, what kind of characteristic, because it's very special, I mean, it's different from the other kind of the industry, what kind of characteristics characteristics of healthcare, of quality in healthcare you have to think about, what goal we have in the healthcare system, what can improve the quality, what kind of challenges are connected with this, and how to measure this quality. And that's very important to think about how we can improve quality. But there are models, so it makes it easy. We have models in scientists and the scientists nearly everywhere, also in quality management. You just have to know about them, that you don't have to think yourself. Yeah? You just apply the models. This makes it easy. And then there are quite some tools, and I like to show you one of the tools that is very, very handy and easy to use. It looks a little bit complicated in the beginning, but when you will see it's very cool. You really spend a lot of, uh, you really save a lot of time with tools like this. So, what is quality? I mean, before we think how to improve quality, we have to find the idea what is quality, how we can define quality. And there's, uh, it's a pretty broad, wide range. Um, it's, uh, I mean, in the healthcare system it's a little bit complicated, but let me think about the, you, you bought probably some beer over there in the, host, in the hostel. So what was your basic idea of buying beer? Uh, there should be a beer in the can, it should taste. Um, there should be some alcohol inside. Uh, the can or the tin should look nice. It should taste something else. Uh, it, should nice. it should be cheap. Okay, so yeah, so they are kind of measuring what is quality, and if I would ask around, maybe I would get different ideas what quality of beer is. I mean, even worse in the healthcare system, but yeah, we have to be a little bit more serious. So, um, the quality in the healthcare system can be defined as a standard of something as measured against other things, of course, of a similar kind. You cannot uh, compare the apples with the pies, you have to compare always the same things and then see how they are related. But let's have a um, pragmatic interpretation. It's always fitness for the purse. I mean, same with the beer. Fitness for the purse, that's quality. And why is this important? Uh, because it's important uh, to, that we provide medical resources in a high quality to all who need them. 
And that's not only the doctors or the nurses or the physiotherapists who are working with the clients. Everywhere we are working in the health area, there is IT behind. I mean, think about the documentation. Think about how the air stuff or the computer tomographs, how they transport the data. I mean, IT is everywhere. And you, in the IT sector, you're part of it. And if your part does not work well, everybody else is screwed up. So this is why it's so important that also you think about quality and that you have a connection to the healthcare, to the other healthcare stuff. Okay, uh, I said there are some different characteristics in healthcare. You should be a little bit aware about it. Um, that's first, the it has to be safe. It has to be effective. It has to be person-centered. It has to be timely efficient and equitable. Um, so maybe not everything is really related to the IT, but a lot of things. Like, think about safe. I mean, uh, you have to avoid harm to patients from care that is intended to help them. Uh, with the IT, uh, you really have the possibility to make things more safe. The things have to be work safe. I mean, it's not that you have a cable sticking out of the thing and the patient client gets an electroshock or something. It has to be effective. I mean, you don't want to measure everything five times. Oh, oops, that didn't work. Oh, please go through it again. I mean, uh, that's not okay. It really has to be effective. Person-centered, I mean, well, we are not so person-centered in the IT. This is more the doctors and the nurses stuff. And I don't know what, what the thing is doing now. I mean, at least here, at, at my notebook, I have a big problem. It's doing something. And uh, if something is really person-centered, it might be that it's not that efficient, uh, but you have to balance it. And, and that's a little bit difficult sometimes in the healthcare system. Okay, now I'm screwed up here because there should show up another slide. I mean, nothing stops. It really, there, in the IT sector, is one of the sectors where the knowledge rise uh, incredibly fast and uh, makes really huge steps. And uh, to, you have to be always in, in time and have to know always something about it. And uh, this <coughs> makes uh, organization changes. I mean, if the IT changes, also the organization changes. So you have to be aware about this. As soon as you develop something, the whole process behind might also change and has some effect, effects. Uh, or also here, <coughs> this, uh, this stuff, I mean, big knowledge, skills and new practices, including learning from other sectors. In the healthcare system, uh, you have to work with so many other people and other professions. And they have completely different ideas and completely different education. But be aware of this and learn from them. And they will also, also learn from you. It's really great. And that's why I really like this project here, because uh, there are different people from different countries and with different backgrounds. 
and I think you can really provide a lot, so you really uh, have a lot outcome in, in this project when you work together, when you work all together and learn from each other. I think this, uh, you will never stop doing this in the healthcare system, this makes it so interesting. Yeah, why is this important? Um, because many, uh, you have to measure sometimes and you have to show how you determine quality in healthcare. Uh, this is a big challenge. Um, and it might be also interesting for you young people because after finishing the university you're going to apply for a job. And um, the, one of the standard questions if you apply for a job is how will you work or how will you as a person um, provide the quality or enhance the quality of our company. And there you should be aware that there are more possibilities of how to define quality. I mean it's first the structure then it is the process and then it's the outcome. I mean, of course, outcome is the most important one, but the other ones are easier to measure, like structure and process are easy to measure, but the outcome is so important. But to sell yourself or to have an idea how you can um, place yourself there, I mean, structure, as a quality of structure, is for instance a very easy concept. It's the typical things of physical plan, like building, equipment, <coughs> material, everything you can hold in your hands. Uh, but don't forget the personnel, the manager who is responsible for the personnel, uh, people, knowledge is one of the part, is one of the things that's part of the structure. I mean, it's not only how many MAs or CTs we have, 4,000 inhabitants. It's also what kind of educated people we have and how many of them. And you are going to be one of them. So you are part of the structure and you are part of a hopefully high quality structure. And uh, of course, this you can not really spread in an interview, but be aware of this, that uh, the manager of the hospital or manager in the IT department likes to have somebody who brings in some quality. Process. With your work, you're doing a lot. Um, you're doing a lot that makes the process of the healthcare better with IT. Do you have any idea uh, with, with your project, you're actually working on it, how it makes um, it a better world or better process for the clients. There's somebody is working on a project who thinks, okay, this makes it easier for the client in the healthcare process. Yeah. So in IT, we define this as user experience. So we include this in the methodology of developing real time. Uh, not project in here, obviously, projects we work on outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it would be interesting to see how many people recognize user experience studying IT systems or developing IT systems. <coughs> And that's, that's really, I mean, I think all of you, I mean, all the projects I've seen uh, is making a better life for the clients. I mean, what else you're doing it for? The, this, uh, for instance, the project the also first started about the game of measuring vital data uh, from clients. Does it make, I mean, not the prototype maybe, but the more enhanced um, version, um, does it make the life of the clients better? Yeah. I recently read a paper on this, it's from USA, it's a 2014 one, and actually they explore, it's a uh, communication scientist which explored the different uses of medical data collected through different sensors and systems and how different actors in the system, it can be pharmacist, it can be the uh, individual, it can be the doctor, how they make sense of this different data and how they use differently the very same data. And actually there are problems with that. 
they state that it's not always good to know all the uh, measurements about your body because you can interpret them very different than a doctor mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily always a good thing. So I totally agree with you. <laughs> if you are criticizing this. Uh, no, no, I'm, uh, no, I'm not really criticizing that. No, I think it's... Um, no, I was thinking about it on a little bit different way. I mean, of course, you have to make sure how, how, what should the user know and what should the professional know, that no strange information is coming out and the user or the client is confused and even more nervous than normally. This you absolutely have to make sure with the equipment. Um, I, I thought more about things like you're measuring from some vital data. I mean, client is at home and he has the super nice equipment and he's measuring his data and um, uh, he, he, measure, he can measure it right. Uh, he don't have to um, be very advanced in using the equipment. And if there is somehow a different range where you say, okay, where, where the programmer thinks, okay, the, uh, this uh, is now out of the line. Like yesterday we see with the heart rate measuring, the heartbeat measuring. I mean, there could have been sent an automatic information to the doctor, please call this client because the data are not really in the line. So uh, I think this makes a better life for the client maybe. So I think a lot of project makes it better for the client. Or think about this Alzheimer where you, where you are finding the things. I mean, when you have this Alzheimer disease and uh, you leave your key or your glasses or some things down there and you don't find them, this is, can be really annoying and, um, and not very funny during the time. But when you have somewhere a system where you see, oh, okay, here are my things, this makes life easier and all of these things. I think you can really do a lot in how to make the process for the clients better. Be aware of this, that, that your equipment and your IT should make or really does the process for clients better. And following up an uh, outcome, maybe clients can get better treated uh, or you can prolong the process that they have to go to a retirement home. I mean, if you do equipment, like I think in the first week I was not there, you heard something about uh, when you burn something on the oven, then automatically some water comes down. Uh, I mean, this can, this can be things in the small, smart home living or RRL sector that can make people live longer, stay longer at home without some foreign help or something. Uh, be aware you are doing a lot good things with your IT. And, uh, of course, it's not always easy to measure this stuff. I mean, think about the prevention of heart disease. The goal of the project, I mean, for the Gamma project is, for instance, to reduce morbidity and mortality. And But it's really heavy to measure this. I mean, how can you prove that this client with this equipment lived one week or one month or even some years longer? I mean, that's a little bit difficult. So sometimes you have to measure the process. So, but you, you measure something, you check what makes my equipment or my IT, what makes it a better world. And there are models about this. Uh, I'd like to show you now one of the models. I think maybe you have seen already this Deming cycle, the plan to check act. Uh, somebody has heard about it? Okay, okay so some have heard about it. Okay, that's a model of continuous improvement um, and it's invented from the guy that's called Deming and it's quite cool because if you follow this, uh, nothing can go wrong. I mean, it's always, and, and it's so nice that the quality management, it's always the same. You, know? you just follow the rules and it works. Uh, here you can see uh, this Deming cycle, how to make your <coughs> projects better or how to improve constantly the quality if you do like following. Uh, you have there a plan, how you do it. You see, it's quite a big plan because more than the half is blue, that means that's the planning part. Uh, then you do something, that's the orange part, you check something, the yellow part, and then you act. I mean, it's all the same stuff. You think about, think about your projects. 
and your project might be in a prototype after the end of the week, but they might, maybe you can identify some opportunities for improvement. So you think, okay, this is the prototype, let's find some op opportunities for improve this super duper prototype. Then you find some goals with some mission. Maybe you have to form up a team, because the team you did this, maybe is missing some experience. So you find maybe a new team, or maybe you didn't have enough time and the same team comes together. So then you study the existing data and everything, how it works, that's the next step, and then you map the process. And then you determine the actions and you collect and analyze data. So if you've done this and if you're satisf satisfied with this, you check, is this data exceptional? Can we work with this? Can we do something new out of it? Can, what can, can be done better? And if you think so, yes, you start the action, you do it. You identify the intervention, you pilot the intervention, and when everything went fine, you just check. You check what you have done, whether it's okay. You measure the effort, and if you have been successful, okay, fine. If no, just go back and check again the data and see what else you can do. And if everything is okay, you have to formalize the intervention and document the learning. I think that's a little bit annoying because I always treat my students, eh, did you document this and have you done this? I mean, it's not so funny, I know, but it's good because if you did it once, you can use the same stuff at the next project or at the next process. So it's better to document it. Uh, because the whole idea about this, you see here in the standing cycle, uh, here's the timeline. So this is your prototype like now, like you will present it by the end of the week. But this is now the standard. And then you think about how you can improve it and how you can make it better in this circle we have just seen before. And then you make it better. And then you have a new standard. And this is how the prototype cycle always goes further. I mean, not only with cars and mobile phones, also with software, if we, have, if we see how the software development is going on. It's, it's the same stuff. Okay, I skipped this because I explained already. And now I'd like to come to the tools. Um, uh, it's always good to know some tools uh, to make your life easier. Yeah? And here are some, here you can see in alphabetical order some of the tools to make, uh, to, to plan quality. I don't want to explain all of them to you, I just want to focus on one who is very, very handy for software development. It's really, ex so I really like it because it's in the first step a little bit complicated, but then you see it's really easy to handle. And it fits also in all standards we have. So we have, for instance, the 5 V. I I mean, uh, and this I say because I also think um, you can work on this. These are just templates, and you have to work on this as well. I mean, it's not, don't take everything as granted and given. Think about it in your situation, in your company, and, and make it better. I mean, even these quality tools can be made better. For instance, this 5 V. It says, when you have a problem, then you ask yourself um, why we have this problem, what does this problem, when it occurs, and who is going to solve it, and uh, where can this problem be brought up. And I really think, I mean, okay, then you have analyzed the problem, but who is going to solve it? Yeah, I think there should be, or how it's going to solve it. I think there should be added an H, or at least two H, who and how. So you see, you can do always, even these tools you can make better. Uh, there's one that is very interesting, I like a lot, it's the FMR, it's the German one, it's called Fehler Möglichkeits Einfluss Analyse, the Germans are very well known for long words. Um, in English it's called Fehler Mode Analysis. Ever heard about Fehler Mode Analysis? Somebody? And it's, uh, that's really something, uh, something cool as well, because if you produce a product where, um, a medical product where there is some IT involved, and that's nearly everything. Um, there you have to 
you have to have certification that you can go on the market. And there you have to make a risk act. And one, uh, one part, one big part of the risk act uh, is first the fault tree analysis. Uh, Harald my colleague told you something about the um, decision tree. Uh, when you remember, fault tree analysis is just the same. You have the decision tree, you take the decision tree, then you make some fault tree analysis, you see, okay, maybe why there comes a mistake and how the mistake comes. And then, based on this, you make a, a, fa a failure mode analysis. Uh, and this is part of the risk plan. So there's no chance that your product goes on the market without you have documented, documented this. So this is something you should really look at this. Or the Carnot analysis, I will explain in a minute because it's part of the quality function deployment. Uh, the quality function deployment, I like to explain you now because it covers a lot. So quality function deploy deployment, or also called house of quality, is one of the uh, quality tools who is really handsome because um, it's a process used to determine product development characteristics that com uh, combine, and that's the interesting thing, the technical requirements and the customer preferences. And it, it uh, combines uh, all the things you have in the software requirement specifications in this E, uh, A, I, A, E, 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 830. Um, and it's also very consistent with the Six Sigma design. And if something is consistent with the Six Sigma design and the ISO 9001, you're on the safe way. So you can really use this. And it's also get used on all these capability maturity models. That's the models you use when you um, develop uh, all the software development is working with capability maturity models. So you. If you never heard about this, you will learn it during the study because it's extremely important. Okay, but let's see how it works in eight, in eight steps. Also, I reduced it a little bit to eight steps. Okay, first thing is uh, you have some objective. Also, that's, that's what we heard before. We have to think about how to make something better. Okay, that's our objective. And that, that's easy. So we have the objective, first step. Second step is we have Ah, and that's how it, why it's called house of quality because it looks a little bit like a house and you can do it easily in Excel so you don't have to be an experienced computer user or something, you just do it in Excel. Second stuff is you think about the customer requirements. Uh, the customer requirement is really what does the customer expect from our software. Um, and uh, be aware, or as the colleague said, you have different customers. I mean, there's the client, there's the nurse, there's the doctor, there's maybe the hospital management, and everybody has maybe different ideas how your software should look like, and it has to feel, fulfill different activities. And not everything that the doctor is interested in is also interesting for the client or for uh, the mother of the client or whatever. So be aware we have different client and split it up. Um, and thinking about the typical stuff in the computer and the software stuff, what um, what a client, what we need uh, is regarding to the ISO 9126 standard. So I made my life easy and see what is in the standard and see. Our software has to be functional, reliable, usable, efficient, maintained, mobility and portability. So these are the six characters you every software has to have. You you agree or so something okay super. And okay, even better then we define a little bit what it is all about. But this is okay for a very high level of development, but Usually we should go a little bit more in detail. So we really have to think about it. What exactly is functionality? Yeah? Split it up. Think about it more closely. Functionality is, for instance, the suitability, the accuracy, the interoperability, the compliance, the security. I mean, maybe some other things as well. Just think about what can be functionality for the client and for which client. 
So we have the uh, long, long list. You can do this, of course, as well for reliability. Any idea what can be summed up about in reliability? that it's not just a software guys, just interdisciplinary team and you figure out what is really important for the client and how the client understands these things. Um, are you okay with customer requirements? And because the next step is here, uh, you have some requirement characterization and verification, so some weighting. There can be used the Kano classification. Uh, because not every client's need is as important as the others. I mean, there might be something that is very, very important for the client and something that is also nice to have and is in the, in the customer requirements, but it's not so important. So you weight it up. And there is some, met I mean, you can make your life easy and say, okay, 10 is the highest and 1 is the lowest. But uh, you can also do some Carnot classification, and of course I want to tell you about this. Uh, the Carnot classification, as a Professor Carno invited this in the 1980s, and that's some, he somehow sums up the customer preference, preferences in five categories. The must be quality. I mean, these are attributes that are taken for granted. I mean, if, if you don't have this, forget it. It's like when you buy a car without a steering wheel. You maybe can do it in the future, but not yet. So you have to have it. Yeah? Uh, and the one-dimensional quality, uh, these are attributes resulting satisfaction when fulfilled and dissatisfaction when not fulfilled. I mean, for a car, let me think about it. Somebody told you this car makes it from zero to 100 in five seconds and it takes you five minutes, yeah, you will be unsatisfied. Um, then the attractive quality, and this is something you should really think about it, even in the software sector, because uh, these are uh, points that the client is surprised to have it and he's very pleased. That's why the handy industry works that fine, because oh, my new handy can also do this and this, and did you expect this? And then all the other manufacturers, of course, they say, oh, cool, this handy is doing this and this. We have to really hurry up that our handy can do this as well. And so a new standard comes up. And same stuff with, stuff, with software. Uh, this, this software can do this, and uh, it is very useful or handy for the client. And on the next step, uh, all the others will have it as well. So uh, really think about carefully about the attractive quality because this might your product so very special and a lot better than the others one because the customer is so delighted that he has this. Then there are some indifferent quality measures uh, that, I mean, they are neither good nor bad. I mean, that's, uh, sometimes people are different, you know, like from a car, somebody likes to have an automatic car and if he orders an automatic car, he's expecting an automatic car. Yeah. And the reverse quality, uh, this is uh, yeah, when the client is really this affections uh, when, uh, when he has it. I mean, that in the software, it's my, maybe sometimes a little bit different. Some people like to have something complicated and really enhanced. And other pe people like to have something where they can press the green button, button and the result shows up. So this are uh, the, the reverse quality. So you think about in the step three about the quality and then of course you always have in the step four some competitive analysis. Look what other people doing in the same, uh, in the same area. Uh, are their products uh, better, different and how they are different? Because you have to, um, not everybody in the market can do the same thing as better to 
to be sometimes a little bit different, even better to be better than they are, but check what they are doing. Okay, and then you have the very interesting part, that's where you are asked in the software department, uh, the supplier measurable responses. I mean, all the technical um, possibility your software has. Uh, this is, um, now, oh, there you think, you think about what can your product really deliver. This might be, for instance, you can also, like the customer stuff, you can also split this up. There can be people-based, coverage-based, problem-based, activity-based, evaluation-based, I mean, whatever. Just think about what your product can really provide to the client. Uh, and you will find a lot of things. Uh, I found some literature about this. Uh, it's from Karna Bach Petitra. It's called Lessons Learned in Software Testing. And it's pretty cool because there are such a lot of parameters uh, in the software de development uh, what might be helpful for you in the future that you don't have to think yourself. And then next step is you somehow have to correlate the thing. Uh, it's not very, it's not from a mathematical point of view, it's very easy because you just have to add something and multiply something, so that's very easy. And the Excel sheet I've prepared for you, it's already filled in. So, quite so easy job. You think about uh, how your um, this, um, how your equipment is working, and you s maybe you have the idea strong relationship is five points, weak relationship is, is one point. Um, but here you are flexible. You can also say 10 point is the best uh, correlation with the customer needs, uh, whatever. Yeah? Also here you can be creative. Important is uh, that everything um, get rated the same, so that, that you have one uh, agenda and this has uh, it gets goes through. I mean, it looks somehow like this. If you do it in Excel, here you have this customer requirement, here you have the design requirements, and here you have your importance or your measurements, like for instance, functionality, suitability is for instance very important. Yeah, you rate, you keep here on five, and then you say uh, how it's regarding to the people based supply matter export or whatever, whatever your software is doing. And then you multiply and sum it up, so here you can see the formula, and then there comes out something in total or something in percent, and then you see easily on one look um, where your software really needs the customer needs, where you really correlate in a very high way, and you can also see where you have maybe a little bit to work on. And then on the next step, the eighth step, and more or less the last step, you can define targets and the technical analysis. And technical analysis, thanks God, they are also standards. You don't have to think yourself so much. But you, of course, you are asked to adopt, adopt it for your own software. Uh, there is this um, standard 830 from the latest is from the year 1998. I took it from there. So maybe this technical requirement and benchmarking values can be functional requirement, performance requirement, security requirement, maintainability requirement, reliability requirement, availability, database requirement, implementation requirement, and so on. You can, of course, expand this list more endlessly. And then you really check every column how you can improve your software, what targets you set, and how you can improve with activities uh, your product. <laughs> and then it should like somehow like this. Here you have all these customer requirements. Here you have all these design requirements. Here you have the, also the ratings from other companies. And here you have the technical evaluation with the targets you have set before. So, and it's, I think that's quite handy and gives you at one sheet of paper very good overview where you can keep on working and prove the quality of your products. <coughs> uh, 
and why this is uh, so handsome for the software. Uh, because uh, I think uh, the software engineering really changes a lot. I mean, yesterday we did something like this, okay? We spent some time analyzing in the design, very huge part in the realization and the testing, and then it's implementing. I mean, today it's a little bit different, it really changed. We spent a lot more time in analyzing and in designing. The realization part is not as big, uh, but we still spend a lot of testing and in implementing. But if you look at this, I mean, we had some lectures about HL7, and there might come out a new standard that's called HL7 Fire, and this is working like this, yeah. Uh, here we have still analyzing and design, but you see the realizing part is start to get a lot, lot, lot smaller. Like here, the realizing part and the testing part, um, because um, you can assemble uh, finished and tested blocks. I mean, it's like a Lego system. You have something finished and you just put the things together and this really makes your life a lot easier than it is right now. And maybe, I mean, I'm not a software engineer, but I think maybe this might be the future. And you see, there might be some changes who made it cheaper, because right now, a lot in the, in the software projects, a lot of money get uh, stuff into the testing. And this will speed up the process and make the process a lot cheaper and maybe also more efficient. Yeah. I mean, this slide is... Uh, to see that we will not run out of jobs, but that's very e-health relevant. Uh, what uh, areas of development in the healthcare system from the IT perspective can be done? I think there are so many things that still with IT can be done better. Uh, like systems for allowing cl uh, clients to provide information into their medical records. Actually, not really possible. Or systems for better allowing patients to request their medical records. But really, there is such a lot to do on it. Standard algorithm for measuring quality. I mean, all this Alzheimer and disease software, they are trying to, de to do some analyzing uh, of algorithm and make standards. Yeah. Or a standard system for reporting results. Uh, or develop a public domain tool, toolkit or uh, yeah, uh, what I think what is extremely important for the most common medical procedures there should be a computer based decision system which prompts physicians to ask clients standardized questions to decide whether to do a procedure and this procedure should uh, generate efficiency data. I think there are really such a lot of things to do in this area to make the health system more efficient, more comfortable for the clients and having more better quality and for lower prices because I don't know uh, how, so I mean I think everywhere in Europe we have the same problem, uh, the healthcare system costs such a lot of money, we are running out of money and everybody tries to save somewhere something. I think with the IT we have the possibility to support this a lot and make the system a lot more efficient and better and finally a lot cheaper and more professional. Yeah. Summary, so what, what have you learned about today? Graz is a nice city. We have a great university and it's cool to be there. Please join us for a semester or two when you have time and when you want to let, know more about eHealth. That quality is important is the third thing and that you should think about quality before you start to work and enhance the process during the time. And there are tools that make your life easier, just use them. So I think this have been the five important messages I wanted to spread in this hour. And um, I'm glad, oh, I'm, uh, ah, and there are some literature. Yes, uh, some literature is also in the slides. Um, I like to give you the slides, of course, and I like to give you this Excel sheet where you can see all the standards and where you can create your own house of quality quite easily. 
And uh, if you are interested, uh, here the bold mark, uh, it's uh, especially uh, the English literature I've used and uh, who is really interesting, especially in the software development area. Yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And of course, I like to answer all your questions, maybe when you do your presentations or before you do your presentations in the group works. Um, maybe we, I can support you there as well uh, if you put some information in your slides. Okay. <laughs>